Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we are on lesson 1.2, prime factorization, which sounds difficult but that isn't so much. Um, first I'll talk to you about what a prime factor is. Actually I'm going to narrow that down to what a factor is. A factor is like a number that, that you would multiply by another number to get a different number. That sounds really not easy to understand, so let me see if I can clarify. Um, if I had the number 10, what numbers would I multiply together in order to get the answer of 10? I could do 1 times 10, or I could also do 2 times 5, right? That equals 10. These numbers, 1, 2, 5, and 10, are all called the factors of 10. So that's all they mean by factors, as numbers that can multiply together to build another number. That's what a factor is. A prime number is uh, a number, I call them the loners. They're all alone, they have no friends. They are numbers that um, their only factors are one and its own self. It doesn't have any other factors. Like for example, let's look at 10. Uh, one times 10 makes 10, right? But two times five also makes 10. So because there's another set of friends here other than just the 1 times 10, then this would be, 10 would be considered not prime, which the word for that is composite. It's a composite number, meaning not prime, they're opposites. So a prime number would only have this combo without any other possibility. So let me give some examples to help clarify that. So a prime number would be like number two. The number two is prime because the only factors you could use to build a two is one times two and that's it. No other friends, sad, crying, right? He's a loner. Three, the only numbers you could put together to multiply together to get a three is a one times three. So there's no other way. So it's prime number, three is a prime number. Two is prime, three is prime, uh, five. Um, you could do 1 times 5. Is there any other way to uh, build a 5, multiply together to get a 5? No, there isn't. So that's prime. Let's look at 6. I could do 1 times 6. Is there any other way to make a 6? You're right. Yeah, I could do 2 times 3. So um, since he has other friends other than just the 1 times 6, then... He is a composite number, not prime. And so what that brings us to is what prime factorization means is getting all of my factors broken down to the point that they are only prime. And it seems like a silly thing to do, but it really is a helpful tool that will help you with divisibility. It helps you when you have to learn how to do LCM, uh, lowest common multiple, GCF, which is greatest common factor, next couple lessons coming up. Uh, it helps you when you need to simplify fractions, and it helps you have control of numbers when you need to divide. So understanding the basics behind it will help you in the lessons all the way through this year and into next year's seventh grade and eighth grade math. So the first thing I would do is, now that you understand what a prime is, I'm going to go ahead and uh, write down all the primes up to 20. So one is never prime, so we can't use that one. Two is a prime, remember, because only one times two makes two. 3 is a prime because only 1 times 3 makes 3. I'm going to skip 4 because 2 times 2 also makes 4, so that's composite. 5 is a prime because 1 times uh, 5 is 5 and nothing else makes that. 6 is not because um, 2 times 3 makes 6, so it's not a prime. 7 is prime. 1 times 7 is the only way to make 7. And you're probably starting to think, other than the 2, it must be every odd number. Well. Maybe, let's see. Uh, eight is not prime because two times four makes eight, so there's an, that has a friend. Uh, here, here's where we find out whether our um, hypothesis of odd numbers works. The number nine is odd. Um, one times nine obviously makes nine. Is there any other way to get a nine? Yeah, you're right, three times three. So that means that even though it's an odd number, uh, we've just canceled out that hypothesis. Not every odd number is prime. Nine is a composite number because three times three. So we'll skip that. Ten, composite, because two times five. Eleven is only one times eleven. 
12 has 6 times 2. 13, only 1 times 13 is the only way. The next one is 17, because 1 times 17 is the only way. And uh, 19 is the next prime number, all the way up to 20. 1 times 19 is the only way. There's more beyond that, but I'm going to tell you, for my purposes, I have found that the most important ones to keep in mind um, are these. I haven't really needed them. So it might be handy during this lesson to just write those at the top of your page every time you're working on it, just to have it handy right there in front of you. So to do prime factorization, there's there's probably lots of tools, but there's two tools that your book is is um, is showing you, and you're gonna find one that you like best. Um, and I'm not I'm gonna save till the end which one I like best. I'll show you both ways, and then I'll I'll tell you which one I like best and why. But everybody's brain is different, so you might find that you like the other way better. And showing you both ways lets either you and somebody else find which works for them. So the first way that they show you is, I call it the tree method. So let's say um, they want me to find the prime factorization of the number 180. Okay, so I'm going to put some branches. So it's going to be the top of my tree. The number 180 is at the top of my tree. And I'm going to ask myself, what numbers, any two numbers, I can multiply together to get 180? Well, if I see this zero at the end of the number, I know 10 is a multiple, uh, 180 is a multiple of 10. Uh, any number with a zero at the end, it's 10 times something, right? So I'm gonna go big and knock this number down as fast as I can. So I'm gonna say 10 times 18 makes 180, okay? Then I'm gonna ask myself, and it's this is where it's handy to have this in front of me. I'm looking at the number 10, and I'm looking at the number 18, and I'm gonna ask myself, these two factors of 180, is this one prime? No. Is this one prime? No. So I'm going to keep going. So if they are not prime, I give them branches. If they are prime, I circle them. Neither of them were prime. So I'm gonna give them branches and we're gonna keep going. Okay, now I'm gonna look at um, the 10. What factors, two ways that I can, two numbers I can multiply together to get 10? I can do one times 10, but that's not gonna get me any closer. So when you use the tree, don't do the one times anything. So anything other than one times something, what can I multiply together to get 10? I could do two times five. Okay, very good. Uh, let me ask you this. Is two prime? Ah, yes it is. Okay, circle it. You don't have to give that branches anymore. It's like the apple on the end of the branch. Is five prime? Ah, yes it is. Right there, see? It's nice to have that list in front of me. That makes it easy. Circle it. That's the end of that branch. Let's ask about 18. Any two numbers other than one in itself that we can multiply together to get 18? Oh, uh, how about, um, how about uh, three times six? That's one way. All right, there might be another way, but that's one way that comes to my mind, three times six. Okay, let's look at the end of those branches. Is three prime? You betcha, circle it. Is six prime? Uh, no. Okay, give it branches. Okay, what numbers can multiply together to give me six? Two times three, though. Okay. Uh, is two prime? Yes, circle it. Is three prime? Yes, circle it. And now my prime factorization is done because every branch ends with an apple. So you would write this out on, the, on your paper or whatever, however, however you had to report it. This is how you would write the answer. Prime factorization is the two here, I'll cross it off. I, we go in, they usually want us to go in like littlest to biggest order. So two there, then the three, then the three, and then the five. And as you go even further, you can even simplify that into exponent form. Um, this is two twice, two times itself twice three times itself twice, and then five. And so either of these would be acceptable answers for the prime factorization. And so if I multiplied all of these numbers together, I'm gonna end up at 180. These are all the prime factors that you would need to put together to build 180. So that's the branch way to do that. Okay, let me talk to you about the other way. 
Okay, so the other way the book is telling you about is, I call it the ladder. I, I guess because it looks like a ladder or an upside down wedding cake or I don't know, whatever. Um, and it feels almost like a sort of an upside down division algorithm, that normal algorithm that we use for division where we were talking about putting it in the house and outside the house and all that. It's almost like an upside down version of that. So um, let's say they wanted you to find the prime factorization of 140. And let's say the branch, the tree method was not the one that you liked and you wanted to use the ladder method. So you would put the 140 inside of the upside down house, the upside down division sign, whatever. Um, and let me just do one thing real quick, hold on. Okay, I wanted to add those primes back up at the top of our list because it's handy to have those there until you have them memorized. And you don't necessarily need to memorize them, though it's, it's helpful to have them available for this, or it's helpful to know the first few anyway. Um, so in this model though, I need to, last time it, we didn't care uh, if the factors were prime or not, we just kept building down if they weren't. In this one, you do need to know um, that the number you are dividing into 140 is a prime. So I'm looking at 140 and I'm looking up at my primes here and thinking, what number do I know will go evenly into 140. Well, I do know fives. Fives will go into anything that ends in a five or a zero. So I'm gonna use that five, okay? And then I might have to off to the side go, well, how many times is that? And I'll use my normal method. Uh, there's two and that goes in eight times. Okay, 28 times. So I'm gonna put the amount here of how many times, five times 28 is going to equal 140. That's what that says, that's what this says, okay? Looks familiar, right? Just looks like upside down a little bit, okay? Then I'm gonna ask myself, is this prime? Well, even numbers are not prime, so that's a giveaway right there. So even numbers, definitely not prime. So, um, because two always is a factor. So I'm gonna go ahead and do, um, another ladder or upside down cake or whatever. So, okay. Um, then I'm gonna ask myself, what prime number will go into 28? Well, two will go into it just fine um, because it's even, so I know that. But these other ones will too. Um, I'm trying to think what else might, maybe, I don't know. I just know two will. So I'm gonna do the two. How many twos? are gonna fit into 28. Well, two goes into two once with none left over and then into eight four times. So that's gonna be 14 times. 14 times two is 28. Is 14 a prime number? No. So let me go ahead and put a, another ladder rung underneath that. Now I want a number that is prime and divides evenly into um, 14. So up here on my primes, well, seven does, uh, and two because seven times two, right? So either of those are gonna work. So I'm gonna do the two. And two goes into, seven, into 14, seven times. And now I'm here at the stage where I have prime, 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 prime. And when this bottom number is finally prime, you're done. So my prime factors are two from here times two from there times five times seven. And if you wanted to write that in exponential form, that's two times itself twice times five times seven. Okay, so that's the latter form. So those are, those are two methods. I told you I would tell you which method I prefer. Um, I prefer the latter method because it doesn't require me to have a prime number in the beginning. It doesn't care. Let me go on to that. Let me just show you what I mean. Okay, so it doesn't care if I have um, a prime number multiplying into it. So this one, and it doesn't matter which ones I find first. Like if it's even, I know it, it two goes into every even number. Um, it goes in 90 times, right? Two times 90 is 180. If I did it that way, it would be the same as if I did it this way, 10 times 18, like we did before. Though none of those are prime. Well, that is, the two is, but the rest of them aren't prime. It didn't matter because I just kept building it down. 
This ended up being two times five. This was the same one we did on the first slide. And this ended up being two times nine, I think is how we did that one. Uh, that was prime, that was prime, that was prime, and this came down to three times three, prime and prime. Um, then let's just put it in order so I can show you what I mean by the doesn't matter which one you do. This person did a 10 times 18 to start with and ended up here. This person did two times 90 to start with, and what are they going to end up with? I wonder if it's going to be any different. Let's find out. So two was prime. This could be 10 times nine, makes 90. Neither are prime, keep going. This is two times five, prime, prime. And this is three times three, prime, prime. So I've got the two, check. The two, check. The three, check. The three, check. And the five, check. They end up the same no matter which way you started. So it gives you flexibility. Some of you will like the ladder way better because you want to start with that prime and move prime all the way through. Some of you will like the tree way better. Uh, and with practice, it gets easier. So uh, there's prime factorization. And of course, you know you have access to me um, outside uh, uh, during your workshop time. If you need more explanation, I'm happy to help you with it.